Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this Friday morning. Got a big show lined up, but first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Folks, we're going to hit 80 degrees today, a high of 80 and a low of 64. It's going to be pretty warm and, and foggy and rain and all kind of stuff. It's just, it's just like spring kind of weather. We know what it is. Water temperature, 64.8. Went up 2 degrees since yesterday. 64.8 is as high as it's been yet. River readings, that price cola at Bluntstown, 11.4. It had dropped a little bit, but now it's shooting back up. And it's still, uh, still high. It all, when it dropped down 11, that's the lowest it's been in quite a while. The, uh, the Choctaw at Caraville reading is a 7.2, and it's almost a straight line on, on, that, on the river there on the Choctaw Hatch, a 7.2. Tide chart is just flat out in deep tides next couple of days, not a lot of movement right there. But we will get a south southeast wind coming in at about, about 10 during the day and dropping about 5 during the night. So that takes care of our. Our weather, we'll come back, we've got a lot to do today, so we're going to be right back. Okay, welcome back. A couple of quick uh, pictures and emails. Let's check them out real quick. Uh, dear Winston, normally I, I ask you to put our names in your bucket for drawings much earlier than this, but we have been very busy making repairs to our home <clears throat> caused by the hurricane, just like everyone else. We were so excited when your show came back on on the air and enjoy watching it every morning. Can you please put our names in the draw drawings? Uh, Lauren Good, Lynn Haven, and Star Good from Lynn Haven. Thanks so much. I just want to read that because that just reflects what we said yesterday about so many people, or, or day before yesterday, in the same bucket. Uh, you, you know, we're all still doing repairs and all, and uh, so we'd be glad to put them in there. All right, and the next one, let's move on down to our pictures. This is not how you budget, guys. I know you want to do it, you budget this way. But, uh, but you, you can't put all the money in the boat. You gotta, gotta give, you gotta have it the other way around. All right, let's see. Next one here. This looks familiar. A day at work, everything looks calm, and then when the day you get off, that's how the water looks. All right, oh, Bobby Johnson. Bobby's a good fisherman. This is a good reflection of what happens this week. He said, not a, not a bad day on the bay. Yes, it was windy, but when you want to go fishing, it doesn't matter. Good job, Bobby, and he, he caught a they caught a nice mess of fish. He had somebody helping him, but that, that's a good mess of fish, Bobby, and that was one of these windy days this week. Isn't this so true? There's no force in the universe stronger than the force that holds five-gallon buckets together. Now, isn't that the truth? I, I, I found that out a lot. Michael Coward, and a lot of other people, too, are looking for this, but Michael, does anyone have any or know anyone with hunting land for lease or any club openings in North Florida or Lower Alabama. So uh, there, a lot of people like to do this kind of stuff and uh, give Michael a call if you do. One of our viewers, now listen, this is, this is interesting here. This is one of our viewers called me after the show the other day. This is Cookie up there in Vernon. He, he drove a log truck for 34 years, Larry Cook. And he went out to check, went out the other day, and this rattlesnake, big boy girl, he sent it to me. Uh, I said that's a big one. I'll get it on the show, but check it out. That he measured right at six foot. He was just checking his feeder, and the same thing about it said it just it was just curled up, and it really uh, really surprised him. Not too far from the feeder, so be careful. Be careful. And this one didn't rattle. A lot of times they rattle. This one didn't rattle. So thank you, uh, Cookie, for sending that. All right, one or two more. One more. This is Gary Giddens with the Panama City Kayak Association. Caught some jackfish, or what's called chain pickerel, in Gap Pond. Gap Pond's been very productive. Okay, now let's go ahead, and I'm, we're going to take an early break. I'm going to come back and, uh, and set up this video. All right, welcome back, folks. Let's go ahead and set this up. We'll have a situation here. Uh, we went out. Uh, we went down to St. Joe the other afternoon and uh, went to the meeting at the public library there on the state on the St. St. Joe Peninsula State Park, and it was a good presentation. Uh, the uh, warden Dennis, the, the head man in charge, did a good presentation, and we shot about 35 minutes of video. And Gail 
edited it down to about 13 or 14 minutes video. This is very informative. It's never before seen pictures because they were there taking them and they're working hard to get it back to us and all. So let's go ahead and uh, I think you'll enjoy this. It goes through the process of the, uh, the uh, uh, public meeting we had. And a big crowd was there too. You see a big crowd, uh, about 80 or 90 people there. So Jeff, let's go ahead and roll this. As with this whole area, our state parks did take a, a wallet from Hurricane Michael. I do have my assistant manager, John Dillard, here. Uh, if I need help with uh, an official you know, answer to a question, uh, he, he'll help me out with that. But I you know, will try to answer anything he can. Hopefully, nobody has seen what I'm going to show. The reason I say that is because that would mean you've been in the northern portion of our park, which is now closed and restricted. And so hopefully you have not seen any of this. But yeah, if you have, shame on you. But I see your hands, please. And your driver's license. You know, I'm going to do a, a like a walkthrough tour from the very beginning of our park all the way to the wilderness area and, and a little beyond. You know, this was our Eagle Harbor area uh, and still is. If you you know, he's nothing above my hand. Uh, it starts about there again. Uh, this was immediately after the storm. We had a, the large breach here, and then we had a smaller breach. And another problem just off the camera here, which we're still going to have to deal with. This breach is gone. It's filled back in. This breach is greatly filling in. Uh, if you guys have any questions relating to that, I'll try our best to answer that. Uh, the sand is uh, creating from both sides, and now uh, there's a stubborn channel, but uh, we're just waiting to see what happens with the rest of the channel. Um, the biggest question we get asked all day long, and we're happy to answer it, but we do get it asked just about every visitor that comes out here, uh, what are you going to do with the breach? And we don't know that yet. I'm, I, I'm sorry if you came here today to hear you know, a definitive answer on what was going to happen at the breach, because um, the Office of Park Planning in Tallahassee is looking at this situation. And uh, we have a lot of you know, ologists, you know, biologists, and hydrologists, and this ologist, and that ologist, and, and, uh, and engineers that are going to be, that are currently looking at this to see what is the best course of action. We did take public comment through February 1st. Uh, a general consensus was they wanted, you know, people wanted to get an RV over here, but they also wanted some water to flow through. <laughs> I mean, that's not, you know, that's, that's not night and day. That, that's, that's possible as well. I mean, that, that's, that's definitely one thing they're looking at. They, um, they, you know, people believe that the influx of some salt water into the bay would be a good thing, and so the office park planning certainly heard that. Uh, so they're going to take that into consideration. Uh, but we don't know what they're going to do. We don't know what we're going to do. What we call the gate, the office, uh, is in fine shape. It needed some repairs here and there. Uh, not the uh, technical infrastructure needed to be replaced, but. Our, our gate's good, so we're ready to take your money. <laughs> Tallahassee love that. Um, this is our park shop, uh, park shop complex. I'm, I'm not really showing pictures of this and just for time's sake, but uh, we did lose a, a storage building, completely lost. Uh, equipment storage building, lost. Right now it's a, a concrete pad. Um, that's all that's left. Uh, we've cleaned the rest of it out. Uh, a, limit, a linen storage building, which was a twisted mess of metal woven around other buildings, and we got to, had to get that out of there. And three park vehicles we lost. Uh, this is one of the first storage buildings I was telling you about. Just to, you know, it's it's cracked and broken all in the back as well. That's an example of what our park. Uh, now we do have, you know, our two main sheds are good, so we're using those. And they're the biggest buildings, so we were lucky in that regard. We still have our main park uh, storage buildings, but lost all of our smaller storage buildings. This was uh, Eagle Harbor shortly after the storm. Um, you can see everything's just a little bit twisted and sideways, and um, it, you know. But overall, it was okay. Miraculously, the marina is back to the shape it was before the storm. You can now launch boats, of course, spread the word. If you want to launch boats, our boat launch is open. 
This is the breach at its widest. Doesn't look like that at all anymore. You know, th this is looking south. So this is the d the day use area, which is now way out here with you know sand. At one point, it was about 20 feet deep. Now we're thinking it's chest deep at the deepest. Here's what it looks like now. We got the sand coming out and you know from the uh, south. Sand, sand coming back from the north and uh, it's a stubborn channel. Uh, you know, I've been watching it, obviously, I've been working out there every day, and our favorite thing to do is to go out there and look at it just like everybody comes to visit. Uh, and, you know, you, for a month, first month you saw it get smaller, and second month you saw it get smaller, third month smaller. But it's kind of, it may be filling from the bottom up, but it, it's not really getting smaller anymore. I mean, that, I'm not a hydrologist, don't. You know, I'm not a scientist, I'm, I'm just a park ranger, but it appears to me, I, do you agree that it just, it doesn't seem to be changing a whole lot these days? The width is remaining stable, but the depth is reducing every day. So, so it's getting shallower every day, but not narrower. But eventually the, the bottom will rise above the surface. And so that seems to be what it's doing for right now. This uh, is, a little bit further down the road, our first campground, uh, campground uh, Gulf Breeze. Gulf Breeze is a bit of a mess. Um, it's probably the worst situation over there, other than maybe the radio residences. But uh, you can see that you know what would once have been the interior of the Gulf Breeze area now has strange retention ponds in them. Uh, you know, utilities all over the place. And I, of course, have lots of pictures of Gulf Breeze, so I'll, I'll just go through a few more here. Uh, this would be, you know, this would have been a road where you were going, you know, campsite, 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 or campsites one through 59. If you were lucky enough to be able to camp at uh, Gulf Breeze right now, you'd be able to sit outside your tent and see the golf, because uh, there are no dunes between the campsites and the, uh, and the water and the golf. Gulf Breeze has two and a half feet of sand through the entire um, campground. You know, this would have been, you know, some sort of manicured grass. That's a ranger joke. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, in campsites all throughout the back here, you've seen. All covered in sand now. Uh, this is what we call Gulf Breeze North. This was our nicest uh, bathhouse. And um, in Gulf Breeze, and uh, I have three or four pictures here of uh, Gulf Breeze North. Holes all the way around it where there were no holes. Uh, this is the interior of Gulf Breeze North. Uh, this is Gulf Breeze South, our, our, the older of the two bathhouses in Gulf Breeze. Um, also, you know, destroyed. It will have to be completely replaced. Uh, this is the inside of Gulf Breeze South. Um, but back out on the road, out of Gulf Breeze, and heading north, back toward the uh, picnic area. This was this is something that we will have to deal with as well. This will be a major. This any day, this would be a major problem for us. Uh, and that is uh, where there used to be a culvert and you know a water inlet and outlet to a, a, the bog that was in the middle of the uh, campgrounds. You, you know, just near uh, Gulf Breeze. Well, it's about, you know, 30 to 40 yards wide now, and that's not filling in. As you can imagine, it's not filling in. And then a little up the road, you go into our picnic area, uh, where many people kayak launched and uh, had a picnic. Uh, this was our parking lot here. Um, you can see that there's a sidewalk in front of the bathhouse, and you know, you used to be able to drive down to launch your kayak. So now there's a, you know, there was always one pond there. Now there's a bigger pond, a, almost a two-part pond. A piece of good news is our pavilion is still stands, uh, and it probably could be, you know, fixed within a matter of a few days. Uh, this is the bathhouse in the in the picnic area, uh, undercut, and the water, you know, goes literally right under it. Uh, the front of it blown out, so the bathhouse is is a wash. It's gone. So the storm surge in the park ranged from what we can tell uh, five to ten feet in different places. It's hard to tell because all our sensors we had set out to collect the data got washed away. Um, in this area, it looks like it was about six feet above sea level. 
And these holes and ponds that Dennis is showing you guys, uh, those are deep. Those are multiple stories deep. Uh, you, there, some of them are two stories. One of them, I think, is a little deeper. So they're not just like a shallow pond. They're, it's an extremely huge um, erosion event that took place in addition to everything else. But Another good piece of news, our friends of the park uh, who we love, uh, built a brand new playground for the kids and it was built well. It's, they're ready for kids to play when we can get there. Well, there's me. <laughs> uh, this is all the way around uh, on, on Shady Pines. This is the entrance to Shady Pines. You've just, you know, branched off the road and you've driven 50 yards down and you're just entering into Shady Pines where you take a right to go past campsite 60, 61, so on. Uh, not this, oh, this is uh, my beloved Shady Pines Pavilion. Um, and well, you know, it looks hmm, okay from this angle, but no, not so. Here's a side angle where you can see that it's basically, it just, it just goes right down from the front. Uh, this is, you know, I did not, I was not able to get a whole lot of pictures of the cabins, but I can tell you just from a couple pictures I have what they look like. Um, all of their boardwalks have challenges. Every every cabin's boardwalk has challenges, I believe, right? But the cabins, you can see, are, are standing, standing tall, uh, ready to someday be rented again, even if we have to go there by boat. Outside cabin five, it looks like. Uh, this is the usual, if you were here at all after the hurricane, this is the black stuff that you see, seen in everybody's houses. Um, and they are, that's what the contractors right now are doing, are making sure that nastiness is out of the building so that it can someday be uh, re-rented and used again. Uh, this is the cabin access to the golf. This is the last, um, or the, the trail that goes uh, from the end of Cabin Road up over the dunes to the golf. Um, that boardwalk's gone. This one, this hurts me because this was my favorite place to, as a ranger to, to uh, escape from the likes of him. Michael Maples, uh, district biologist, um, you know, gave, he gave me some pictures and this is kind of a, this is sad if you know how big these were. These, this is, these are wilderness dunes here. Um, you know, you can literally see the dunes being built just as you can see the, the breach being filled in and you can see the dunes being built. This is, he's uh, saying the dune line was nearly out to the water and previous years, uh, but now the dune line has moved in about 30, uh, 29 meters is what he has here. So it's, you know, that's still, you know, there's a lot of beautiful dunes back here. And here's the hope for the future. Here's, uh, I just threw this in because it's so green. Uh, we're not quite that green right now, but someday we're gonna be that green again. And uh, we still have lots of deer running around. Uh, come on out and see the deer, they're all using the sides of the roads right now uh, for their greenery and uh, they're easy to be seen. So that's contact information to my manager, Mark Napke, if you have any questions, that's their phone number. Okay, welcome back folks. Hope you enjoyed that. You know, that's one of our missions here is to inform you and keep you posted on what's going on. That's about as fresh as we can get it right there. So we, we wanna, uh, we try to cover all those things we can. We don't get all of them covered, but we do the best we can for having a little two-man crew, Gail and I, and then Jeff helps, helps them when we get a studio. All right, we'll go on a drawing. Let's go to big, let's do the $20 gift certificate first. Okay, Star Bright from Lynn Haven. Star Bright from Lynn Haven. Love that name, Star Bright. I'm going to start. Okay, now the big red snapper is going to be Dennis Scott. Dennis Scott and Star Bride are our winners. So glad, glad about that. Now let's go ahead and, uh, and get on our, well, we've about lost it already, haven't we? Our famous Friday fishing forecast. We don't have a lot of time left, but basically I, I wrote down on, on my notes here, I wrote down uh, not yet because, and those two words are put in, not yet. And I'm talking mainly about the, you know, the Spanish and, uh, and the, and the, uh, Spanish mackerel. <laughs> the Spanish mackerel's not here yet. Uh, here we go. We got it. We, here we are. Uh, 
I'm still using the phone. We still do not have internet at the Chester household. So we, anyway, we're going to, uh, not yet on Spanish mackerel. I had a call yesterday, one of the viewers, uh, and what was that deal about the third fog? He wanted to start counting, you know, because this week we've had three fogs. I said, no, you got to wait to March 1st before we start counting the fogs, which is a week from today. So on the third fog in March, the Spanish is going to be jumping you know, on the pier and jumping in the boats and all that. So keep that in mind. Now, good fishing. You saw those chain pickerel caught up there at Gap Pond. You saw some good pictures that just showed uh, some fish. Redfish and trout were caught this week. Uh, so, it, you know, it's been windy. It hasn't been an ideal situation. But, folks, if you get out there and give it a try, you're going to have pretty good luck. And that, we proved that by the pictures. Now, we don't have much tidal flow. Uh, the Choctaw River is going to be steady. The, the uh, Oklahoma River and the Apalachicola River are going to be high, and it's high water. Uh, if you got, you, you know how to fish the high water. You just try to catch it falling when it's falling out. So, uh, the things I wrote down: the Deer Point Dam is going to be good. You're right behind the Deer Point Dam. A lot of those freshwater fish are washed off behind the dam. Go catch you a mess and have them for supper tomorrow night. Uh, hit the feeder creeks. I wrote that down. These little feeder creeks are coming in these areas. Uh, it's, it's going to be some, you know, some sediment stirred up and some bait coming through those feeder creeks. And I wrote the Chattahoochee Dam also. The Chattahoochee Dam uh, is, is going to be in good shape as far as fishing behind it for stripers and catfish. And also bass. Bass fishing is hot now. Uh, the Sand Hill Ponds, Deer Point Lake, uh, Lake Talquin, especially Lake Seminole. You saw Randy Sonoda, the picture I showed of Randy Sonoda with some really big bass. And also uh, the old, old time standby, if you just want to catch some action, go out to the jetties, take your boat out to the jetties and catch some of those bull reds because they're, they're always there. You want to catch them on an outgoing tide. You can use natural bait. You've got any kind of little crabs or anything. There's not a lot of them out right now, but that would, that would be a good way to do it. And, but uh, just going uh, fishing for Spanish and all, it's a little bit early. Pier fishing, I haven't got a lot of information on pier fishing yet. Uh, this, this past week, we've, got a, we've had a situation where we just had not got a, a, a lot of reports that have been wind and foggy and uh, not a lot going on. So, uh, all right, we're going to have to wrap it up. We've had, a, we've had a good week. Next week, all five days are planned. I mean, we've got all kind of, I've got guests coming on. We've got some great video coming on, all kind of things coming on. So next week's going to be exciting. You have a great weekend. Do something good today for fellow man. Help them out. Enjoy the outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.